Always keep in mind, I have no formal computer or tech background. I'm a plumber by trade. So if I talk rubbish, please let everyone know in the comments, but keep it civilized. Back in the day, I had this old laptop, very similar to this one, but mine was made by HP and it obviously had a German keyboard. The whole thing came originally with Windows 2000, I believe, or maybe it was already Windows XP. I can't remember. One day I sat down and started typing something and I realized the letter G didn't work anymore. So what does a young stupid lad like me do? He thinks if you just press hard enough, it might work until the hard enough became a real full on one finger punch, which then subsequently damaged the hard drive located right beneath the keyboard. The read head smacked into the spinning drive and that was the end of my laptop. Usually I'm not a violent guy, but there was also the other incident where I tried to navigate the CRA website. For anyone who doesn't know that, the CRA is the Canada Revenue Agency. It's our tax man, so to speak. And while I was doing that and setting up my account, Windows decided it needs to do an update. It made me so furious that I punched the screen of my Toshiba laptop at that point. That, that Don't do that, it's not a good idea. So, in summary, what makes me really mad? Windows, forced updates, and government websites. But I digress. Back to my HP laptop. I thought it was game over. I thought it was complete toast. I damaged the hard drive and that's the end of it. I'm also known to tinker around and try things before I completely give up. So I took the hard drive out, hooked it up to my desktop PC, and I was actually able to read most of the files. It turned out only the boot drive was damaged. At least that's what I thought at that point. I tried to reformat the whole drive, but Windows was just not able to do that. And that brought me on to Linux. Back then, you could have live Linux sessions, but I believe they were still on CD. I'm not 100% sure if booting from USB was already a thing. Maybe it was, really, I can't remember. It's that long ago. So I went through several Linux environments. I believe it was SUSE, Ubuntu, and Red Hat, and maybe something else, uh, until I actually found one that gave me a drive partitioner powerful enough to repartition my damaged drive. And if I remember correctly, it was SUSE in those days. So I ran a live session of SUSE Linux on my desktop with the damaged drive hooked up and I was capable of partitioning the drive in a way that I checked where the Windows boot section was and I gave it a little bit more and I said, okay, cut this bit basically out and leave it completely unallocated. And then I formatted the rest of the drive, put it back into the laptop, and I actually then installed Linux on that very laptop. And it worked again, sort of. I was playing around with Linux, but I had several problems in those days. Most of the documentation was in English, also command line commands, that didn't mean anything to me. I barely spoke any English. So, sudo. I didn't know that means super user do or CD, that that stands for change drive. CD was for me compact disk. So these commands didn't make much sense to me. It was all gibberish. And then there were some other quirks, specifically on laptops. The driver support was not the greatest. You also have to keep in mind with laptops in those days, often you had weird proprietary motherboard designs and all kind of weird stuff. So you used one Linux distro and uh, it would not recognize the screen resolution properly. Then you used another one that got the screen working properly but had no audio output. The other one would work mostly okay so that you could use it but the CD drive, yes that was important, 
the CD drive was not supported. I'm pretty sure if I would have been capable of digging deeper into the Linux world, I could have probably made everything work. But I also wanted a laptop that I can just use. So I switched back to Windows. However, that gave me an insight into Linux and I recognized how much power, one might say, this operating system actually gives you over your computer. And this led to the fact that years later I always carried a des dedicated USB stick with me. Not everywhere, but I had one on hand if I needed it. And that had a live, I believe, Ubuntu environment on it. And what do you know? My nowadays wife had a laptop, Gateway, not this one. Um, and it was on its last leg. The drive was also damaged or too old, I can't remember, or overheated because it was lugged around a lot and, you know, left on and just closed, sitting on a bed or on a couch with the vents mostly covered. Not a good environment for tech. But with this live USB stick, I was able of retrieving most of her files, pictures, songs, but mostly the pictures were important. So I was like, yeah, another win for Linux. Let's now fast forward to today, 2025. The so-called year of the Linux desktop. Again, when I started this YouTube journey, I was so fed up with subscriptions here and your hardware is too old for our new operating system there. And no, um, you have to upgrade this and that. And I was so fed up with it that I decided Maybe I should give Linux a go as a daily driver. In fact, I actually then installed Fedora on my main desktop computer. But uh, we get into that in another video. I mean, what did I have to lose? I didn't know nothing about YouTube. I knew nothing about video production. I knew nothing about video production software. So I might as well learn it all on a new platform. Well, that actually worked for the most part. And besides trying to daily drive Linux as my main working computer, I also played around with old junky hardware, where I installed certain Linux distributions in order to see what I could make work without actually damaging my main workstation. One of those pieces of junk was this RCA Cambio. This thing was shit under Windows and it actually still is shit. However, I managed to put Batocera Linux on it for some retro gaming and some weird 3D printer shenanigans, as you, you were able to see in my other video. It was quite the task to get one of these tablet-y kind of PCs to change operating systems. Uh, just installing Batocera didn't work. It would just not wipe the drive. There was always Windows remnants and stuff left over. It was just a hassle. So I ended up installing Debian on it and that was able of wiping the drive completely, overriding it several times until there was nothing left. Then I installed Debian, um, which was a little bit weird because it didn't recognize the self-flipping screen. So I had did in portrait mode and I had to type like this because also the little touch screen was rotated 90 degrees. Yeah, but oh, hey, um, I must have touched a button. It, it just booted itself up. Like I say, this thing is absolutely weird. It does stuff that it is not supposed to do. I thought it was actually, and now it seems dead again. Yeah, junk under Windows, still junk. Linux can't save everything. And one day I was running around a thrift store and I came along this machine, Gateway Laptop, for $7.99. It came with Windows Vista Home Premium. Yep, there is the code. So if I ever feel inclined to go back to Windows Vista, I could do that. Don't know why I would, but I could. Let me give you a piece of advice. If you ever donate a piece of technology 
to a thrift store or maybe sell it to a pawn store. Make sure you either way remove the drive or you completely wipe it. This one came with every single personal and business piece of data that the former owner had stored still on it. Social insurance numbers, wedding pictures, other stuff. In the case of the gateway laptop, I once again installed Batocera in order to create a somewhat portable retro gaming console. It was also a little bit a pain in the butt because the BIOS that came with the thing did not have a setting where you could just say boot from USB until I tell you otherwise. So every single time I tried to install it I had to go into the BIOS and set it to USB manually but I got it to work. And here's another thing. Today with the advent of AI LLMs if you get stuck you don't necessarily have to go through endless forum threads or search on Reddit or God knows what. If you have a specific problem and you ask it a specific question, it can certainly give you the right command or direct you in the right direction what to do. Of course, if you ask too broad a question, it will start hallucinating and create an endless long thread with nothing but bollocks in it and... Uh, yeah, so it is a, you know, two-edged sword. There's something about the Linux community that is often said that, ooh, some of them are so hostile and blah, blah, blah. I actually don't think so. It's just if you jump into the deep end and you try out your first setup with Arch Linux and you have no clue what you're talking about and you ask questions, like if I would be on the other end, I would not be very inclined on guiding you along every step of the way. And you also have to think about it from the Linux user's perspective, not the new one, the advanced knowledgeable one. I mean, like I said at the beginning, I'm a plumber. If you ask me, how do I change a toilet? I would say, oh, that's actually very simple. You get rid of the silicone seal around the bottom, if it is a floor mounted one, take the two beauty caps off, unscrew the toilet, Lift it out, then you can put the new one in. Should fit. What I didn't tell you, because to me, in my plumber brain, that's normal. You have to first shut off the water to the toilet. You have to empty the toilet tank. You have to make sure that you have some kind of a piece of cardboard or so to put the toilet on, because those things can be quite heavy. And if you put them on the wrong floor material in the wrong angle, you can damage your floor. You have to shove something in the bottom drain so that you don't spill the rest of the water that's still in the P-trap all over the floor while you carry out this heavy, awkward thing. And that is often the case with Linux advice. It's like, oh, it's very simple. Do this. But they miss all those tiny little steps you have to do in f before that. Well, that's not because they are evil people. It's just to them that's the normal workflow which you at that point are not familiar with yet. But yeah, if you can get your hands on cheap or even free older hardware, totally give Linux a try. Worst case, you had fun tinkering, you learned something new, and maybe you decide Linux is the way forward, or you don't. If you don't try it, you will never know. And in part two of this little series, I will let you know about my special solution that I came up with to switch over my main machine to Linux in this weird, awkward, transitionary time where I had to go back and use Windows for the odd task or where there was data on a drive that I hadn't recovered yet. I will show that in part two. Thanks for watching. See you next time.